I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
how these two commandments have all the law and the prophets.
read from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, my brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you be not grieve as others who do not have hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks. So 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Divine. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Praise is due to thee, O God. To thee shall all flesh come. May the words of my mouth, meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Funerals are sad. Funerals are less sad for people of faith. It is interesting to look at the Mass, and I always say that we should look at the Mass for solace. There are no words that I come up with or any other speaker comes up with that makes anybody feel any better. That's not the case with God because he is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. His words that he has spoken through scripture and through his church do give us solace. They also give us a dose of reality. They make us understand that today is a sad day, hence the colors that the church has traditionally worn. It's a day of loss. It is a day 
if sadness in some respects. In other respects, and this applies to people of faith, it is a day where there can be some solace in understanding, as the gospel tells us today, that our Lord Jesus Christ is the resurrection. We don't rely on ourselves, but on him. And throughout the mass, most of it is sung. They are, they are, the cantor speaks the words of the psalmist throughout the mass. It starts out Psalm 65, that is the one that I just read. Praises to thee, to thee, O God, to thee shall all flesh come. It really gives us a heads up because when we come to a funeral, we can feel really bad for the family, and we should, that was lost somebody. But every funeral we go to, like every sacrament we go to in the church, every baptism that you go to, every little infant that sit there, if you're 50, 60, 70 years old or older, you look at that infant and you see and you should remember your baptism. You should kind of do an examination of conscience and think about, you know, am I living up to my baptismal promises? You know, you can't remember them because you're a baby. So you hear them at every baptism. Every funeral is the same thing. It gives us a heads up of something. Like I said, we could be sad for the family, but we also get a heads up from God that should the Lord tarry, each and every one of us is going to have our day, each and every one of us. God gives us a warning to that. We should do an examination of conscience, just like I said about our baptism, and understand, you know, do I really believe that my Lord Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, that in him none die, but they shall live? Praise be to thee, O God, to thee shall all flesh come. And that can be kind of a downer, but it goes on to say, Blessed is he whom thou dost choose to bring near, to dwell in your courts. That's why St. Paul, when he's getting ready to die, his death is before him, he knows he's going to be executed, he says, I have fought the fight, I have finished the race. He stayed his course his whole life. Yeah. Struggles interior, struggles exterior, he deals with those, but then at the end he realizes that this is the promise. The promise is that we live in Christ Jesus our Lord, and blessed are those who are, he chooses to bring to him, to finally bring us near. We don't struggle down here anymore. We are that with him been promoted to either the church suffering or the church triumphant, but either or, Jesus Christ is there, and we're going to get to heaven. No question. So, yeah, there are some things about funerals that are sad. There are other things that should really get us thinking, and they should even actually put us in a positive light about things. Another psalm that is in the midst of the Mass today is Psalm 112. The righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of evil tidings. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid. It doesn't say one word in there about not being sad. It doesn't say one word in there about not crying over a lost loved one. It just says that our hearts will remain firm. That's why it's funerals for me are a whole lot easier. If I know the folks, a whole lot easier. It's a pleasure, actually, to do them because it is the mass that can keep our hearts firm. It is the Mass that does keep our hearts firm. It is that understanding of sadness, yes, but resurrection nonetheless. If we got walked through the door to get to the other side. Our Blessed Mother had to endure it. Our Lord Jesus Christ had to endure it. Every martyr, every saint has had to endure it. Why do we think we're any better? Why do we keep putting it, keep putting it off and putting it off? is something good for us if we are people of faith. That chanted uh, sequence today, the dies irae, that's the first couple words of that chant. Day of wrath. What? You talk about the resurrection, what about this day of wrath stuff? That's why you don't hear that one too much in masses anymore, because it's looked upon it being somewhat negative. If you listen to the whole thing, the words are in your hymnal. If you want to read something before or after communion today, read the words of that. It does start out with days of wrath. We are human beings. We're born in trespasses and sins. Original sin, if anything else. And that's enough to separate us from the grace of God. It's a day of wrath that we face death. It's what our Lord told our first parents. That you're going to face, if you sin, 
And now that they did it, we all have to deal with it also. It's a day of wrath when we are called to himself. No one looks forward to it, especially those who are left behind. But the sequence goes on to speak of all that our Lord Jesus Christ has done for our redemption, the price that he paid, the sadness that he endured. This is what the dose of reality I was talking about before. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's kind of interesting in the, in the Roman breviary, there are offices for the dead, the whole thing, said one this morning for Vivian, the whole office is focused on the person or persons who have died. The last psalm in that office this morning is Psalm 150. It's the last psalm in the Bible. It is the end of, it's the period at the end of the Psalter for all the psalms. And so a lot of the psalms are very, very heavy. Some people don't like them. They've taken them out of our lectionary, some of them. They should not have because that demonstrates to us who God is. We have to appreciate it. The Psalm 150, that last psalm that is in the breviary this morning, is, a, is the psalm of praise and thanksgiving. It doesn't have anything to do with death. It doesn't have anything to do with suffering. It has to do with praise. That's it. It starts, it's very short too, just a few verses. It starts out with who are we supposed to praise and where are we supposed to praise him? We are to praise Almighty God in his holy sanctuary. Those are the words of the psalmist. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Why should he praise him? For his mighty deeds. How do we know? I mean, are the mighty deeds of God a lesson in a book? You open the Bible to read the mighty deeds of God, parting the Red Sea and doing all these things. God's Mighty deeds did not stop when the canon of Scripture was closed. They didn't stop. They continue to this very day, his mighty deeds. Well, what are they? Look at lives of faithful people. Look at lives of... The church has never been one to eulogize people. If the Mass, you're supposed to talk about what our Lord Jesus Christ did in their lives. And what he does in our lives is to manifest his mighty deeds. Vivian, great things come in small packages occasionally. Vivian wasn't all that big. Vivian did some mighty deeds of God. It is because of that woman that at least one soul came into the Catholic Church. That woman, in part, nurtured a family in the fear and admonition of the Lord. She trained them up in the way they should go, and they are not going to depart from it, so says the Scriptures. When you lay a good foundation, she manifests the mighty deeds of God. It's like when we worship when we, when we worship on certain days of saints, when we venerate them, venerate saints, venerate martyrs. We don't we're, we're not worshiping them. We worship God who did mighty things through them. Yeah, it takes a special work of God in you to you can throw yourself to lions or on a fire for His sake. He does mighty deeds, and they continue. They continue. Vivian's now got her reward for them, and we are going to try our best to continue manifesting the mighty deeds of God. So someday somebody can get up in front of us and say nice things about us. Why? Because of his mighty deeds. The last sentence, the last thing that we say in that psalm of praise is, let everything that breathes praise the Lord. It doesn't say all faithful people it says, let everything that breathes. We of faith just understand that that's here and now, that we praise him. Because everything that breathes is going to praise him. There are a billion people on the face of this planet plus who got nothing for Jesus Christ at all, but the scriptures tell us, people of faith, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Period. It doesn't matter what you believe here and now, that's what's going to happen. And we should praise him for it. Because he does his mighty deeds continuously. He did them through Vivian. Pray God he does them for you. Now that we have an intercessor on the other side, we've got somebody else pulling for us that we might manifest the mighty deeds of God. But when we are living this life, and this life is just a journey to the next one, we have to appreciate that we got to praise God the whole time in doing it. In order that people will 
when we take that step to the other side, praise him for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice, and yours may be accepted by God and Father for my We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully regard these our oblations which we offer unto thee for the soul of thy handmaid, the like as thou didst grant her grace to believe the Christian faith, so she may obtain of thee the reward of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
pridie quam pateriter acipitanam in sanctas ad venerabilis manus suas, et elevati sacrules ad celum atideum patrum sucum omnipotentem, tibi gratias agens, benedicit, fregit, dedique discipuli suis dicens, accipite et manucate ex hoc omnes, hoc est and in corpus medi. Put for bogus tragedy. Similarly, more of those can out the mess. Accipiens in hoc praequarum calicem in sanctas ad reverberus manus suas, ita tibigatia sagens, benedixit, tiricque discipulis suis dicens, accipite et vivite ex eo omnes, hic est enim calic sanguinis mei, nobi et eterni testamenti, Qui provobis et promultis et condetur in remissionem peccatorum, a petit in meo commemorationem. servants and thy holy people also remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ thy son our Lord is also his resurrection from the dead his glorious ascension into heaven to offer unto that excellent majesty of thy own gifts and bounty the true victim the holy victim the immaculate victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation Thou say to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim which the high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, Almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high, in sight of thy divine majesty, that all we who have this partaking of the altar, shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, which may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who come before us, sealed with the seal of faith, sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech that you grant a boat of refreshment, of light, and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, thou saith to grant a part of fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Asiola, Anastasia, with all thy saints within whose fellowship you be seeking to admit us, not weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thou sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon.
from all evils, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and with Andrew and all thy saints, favor the grant peace in our days, that by the help of thy divinity mercy, we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Almighty God, who gave us our faith, and who has died on the of these holy mysteries, let us share the food of the most precious body of love of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. It does assure us by our favor to be restored towards us, and if we are very average and forfeit the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of both of that everlasting kingdom by the marriage of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. Every one of these people have been father, so assist us to thy grace, and we may continue to have the holy fellowship, and who also supports thy fair and trust in all. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, with thee and the Holy Ghost, the all honor and glory, for all the time again. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray thee that our supplications may be acceptable in thy sight, for the soul of thy servants and handmaidens, especially Vivian being delivered from all their sins, may be made partakers of thy heavenly redemption, who livest and reignest world without end. Amen. Amen. May they rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same as the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And with light, and the light was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the man said to God, His name was John. The same came for witness of every witness of the light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but sent of every witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. It was in the world, the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But his men has received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. When we beheld his glory, the glory is the only God, the Father, of grace and truth.
Oh, <laughs> 